Yo, what's up everyone, Nick here from Rad Dad Builds. So in this video, I wanted to show you exactly how I built this super modern, super rad coffee table. So most of my furniture projects start off with a big slab like this one. So to make it easier to work with, I basically just broke it down into three smaller sections. Because the slab is much wider than my jointer and planer, I had to bring out the big guns and that's my router sled. I do have another video showing exactly how I build this and I will try and attach it to this video. But if not, it will be in the link in the description below. Using my router sled I flattened the top of the three pieces and then the underside I brought it down to the required thickness. I then jointed all the required edges so that way I can glue it together. So I didn't have any final dimensions required for this table so what I did was I ended up using an old shoelace and then wrapped it around a screw in the middle of the slab and I kind of just sketched out what looked best. Once I was happy with the final size of the top, I made some markings to help me domino the piece together. While the dominoes aren't necessary for strength, I always use them just to help me align my tabletop when clamping. I glued and clamped all three pieces together and let it sit overnight. Once the top had dried, I removed the clamps and then just give it a quick sand, removing any excess glue. To get the perfect round in the top, I used my router with a 2 inch straight bit. I'll link in the description below which router bit that I used. The circle jig itself is pretty simple. It's essentially a couple of pieces of plywood that my router is attached to. I then make a mark measuring from the very tip of the router bit to where I want the center of my table to be. So for example, my table is 32 inches, so I made a mark at 16 inches. I then drilled a hole wider than the thread of a threaded insert. I made a hole all the way through the female part of a threaded insert. This way you can locate the center of the table when you align your jig. I stuck the female part of the threaded insert into another piece of plywood and then I stuck that down using tuck tape and super glue. This way there's no permanent holes in the tabletop. And then I stuck it down locating it over the center of the table. I then attach the router part of the jig to the centerpiece and then you're basically ready to go to cut a perfect circle. You want to make sure you only cut down about a 1 8 at a time.
then there you have it. Perfect circle. Easy. So you can see on the top of this tabletop that there's a bunch of weird marks and deficiencies and I wanted to remove that. So I went with like an inlay effect. This is basically where I used the scrap pieces of wood, I cut them down into half inch thickness and then cut them down again into small blocks and squares and rectangles. I then routed those different sized pieces in over the deficiencies, running the grain in different directions. I started off using my router, removing most of the material as I can. Then finishing it off with a sharp chisel. Once I was happy with the top, I gave it a good sand and then made a start on the base. So like I said, when I was cutting the top, I don't have any real measurements or dimensions, so I kind of winged it. I just laid my pieces out and then I marked where I felt would look best. Because the legs on the base are tapered, all my cuts are at 15 degrees. Once I was happy with the size and the height, I started to join the pieces together. For this application, I decided to go with finger joint or box joint joinery. To cut my finger joints, I basically attached a 15 degree wedge to a real simple router sled that I had kicking around. I then stacked my dado stack to a quarter inch thick and then raise it to the height of the material that's used. I glued in a quarter of an inch spacer block a quarter of an inch away from the blade and then made a cut at every quarter of an inch, alternating the start of each piece. And to finish it off, I half lapped the two pieces together. Because the top braces of the base wasn't really visible, I decided to join them together using my domino cutter. I had a bit of a practice run assembling the whole thing together before I glued it, just so I could make sure there's no issues. Once I was happy with it, I glued it up and let it sit overnight. The next day I took it out of the clamps and gave the whole thing a good sound ready for finish. For the finish of the top, I used one coat of Osmo Oil Extra Thin. And then I gave the top and the base two coats of Osmo Oil Poly X, allowing eight hours in between each coat.
Once the finish had dried, I flipped it upside down and then attached the base to the top using threaded inserts. Took some foam pads to the underside of the base to protect the floor that it's going to be sit on. And there you have it, done. I'm extremely happy how this turned out, considering it's my first time using finger joint joinery. It was quite intimidating, but it turned out perfectly. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below and go follow me on Instagram for more day-to-day -day stuff. And as always, stay rad, peace.